Hi, I'm Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up's products for Elizabeth Craft Designs, and today I'll be teaching a tutorial on this. A simple conversion of a pop stand die into a simple box pop up. Okay, first let me explain what a pop stand die is. So this particular mechanism is one where the card opens up fully flat and then the item stands up in the middle of the card. This one is the cup pop stand die. And there are several styles. For example, there's the Eiffel Tower pop stand die. Here's a great card using that die by Francis Byrne. You've also got the bathtub pop stand die and this fun card was made by Fran Sabad. There's the fence pop stand die. Karen Aiken made this super fun card. And at holiday time, you may want to use the Christmas trees pop stand die. Here is a beautiful example by Kelly Booth. Now today we're going to be using the barn pop stand die. Here's an example by Shelly Hickox of using it in the traditional pop stand manner. And today I'm going to convert it to where it can be a simple box pop up instead. So the beauty of this technique is that it uses the pop-up die that actually comes with the pop stand itself and you just do a simple conversion to make that into a different style pop-up. So it doesn't require you to go grab, say, a generic pop-up from one of the other sets. You can just use the one that comes with it. I'm making my card for the April 2016 Designer Challenge, which has a theme of the great outdoors. So I'm going to start by brayering some light blue ink onto the clouds embossing folder. Then I'm going to add a piece of soft finish cardstock into the folder. That particular piece of cardstock for my card today is four inches wide by four and a half inches tall. I'll just make my usual sandwich in my die cutting machine for doing an embossing folder. Any die cutting machine should be able to do this. And then when that comes out of the folder, it's made that really cool two-tone clouds effect. Now what I'll do is add that clouds panel to my card. What my card is, is four and a quarter by nine, scored in the middle at four and a half inches. And I sponge some green ink all over one half of the card. That way once I've added my clouds, I'm gonna have that clouds as a backdrop for the sky. And then I'll have that green to simulate grass on the bottom half of the card. Once I have my two tone card, it's time to cut my pop stand into it. This little die comes with the barn set. It has the little alignment nubs that make it really easy to line up right over the fold of the card, anywhere along the fold, and I've used some temporary tape just to hold it in place while I roll it through my die cutting machine. Okay, pop stand dies cut tabs. That's what they do. It cuts a set of tabs on either side of the fold. You bend those tabs upward, and those are what allow you to add the item. In this case, the barn. You put one on one set of tabs, one on the other. You join those two barns together. You have that traditional standing pop-up card. When you want to convert it into a box pop-up, you need to add some joiner pieces. Now, the length of these is always going to be one inch. The width is going to depend on which pop stand you're converting. For the barn, you can just do a 5 8 by 1 inch rectangle. And like I say, the length will always be an inch. The width may change depending on which die set you're trying to convert. So the Eiffel Tower, the fence, those have skinnier tabs. So you just have to measure how wide your tab is to determine how wide you should make your little joiners. So glue or tape on top of the tabs and the joiners are just going to go right on there. And then just give it a second for your glue to set up. And then you do is you just start by just folding the card in half again. That will add the fold in the center of the joiners themselves. And now you got to get in there with something. I like to use the end of my tweezers to start working those little boxes to come into the card instead. And then you should be able to just carefully fold the card closed. And what that'll do is it will just join those two tabs into that simple box. And that is really all there is to it. Just like that, you've converted that now into a 90 degree box pop-up. The Through the Lens Wood Series paper is just perfect for the barn. So that's from Els Vandenberg Studios at Elizabeth Craft Designs. I've gone ahead and assembled the barn just following the packaging instructions, or there are a couple YouTube videos as well. A fun feature of the barn is that the doors will slide. That'll give you a place for a fun little hidden greeting. Not for this particular card because I want to glue those down. I, don't, I won't be able to slide them open because I'm going to put a, attach a sheep to the front of the barn for this card. 
to add the barn inside the card, all I need to do is just add some glue or tape to the front of the box platform and just attach the barn to those little boxes. For Snowball the sheep, I've decided to make him a little two-tone black and white sheep. So I've got a piece of white cardstock with double-sided adhesive on the back. I'll need a detail layer and his eyeballs and his little poof at the top of his head. Those all should be done out of the white with the double-sided adhesive. I'm also going to cut the shadow layer out of black with no adhesive. So I'll just pop that out. Now I also have a piece of black that has the double-sided adhesive on the back and I will cut a detail layer out of that black cardstock. Snowball is one of the easiest characters to put together because the detail layer is really just in a single piece. I'm going to go ahead and take out the little piece that, that has his, his chin line, but I'm going to leave in the pieces for his nose and his mouth and even the centers of the ears if they stay in there. I'll just leave those in. And then all I have to do is just put that on the shadow layer, just lining up the outside little scallops so that it all fits on there and leaves a little shadow. And the little hooves at the bottom are actually created by the shadow layer, just the legs kind of stop short, and that's what creates the little hooves at the bottom. I'll go ahead and sink in that little missing ear piece. And the reason that I'm just gonna leave those little white pieces in there is I would like to just take a light pink Copic marker, or any type of marker really, or even a colored pencil, and just go in there and color his little nose and his mouth and the centers of his ears a pink color. The tweezers can be really, really helpful for setting the eyes in there. And of course you can spin those eyes around and have him have any kind of expression you want. If you want him to look straight ahead, you just make sure that the little oval cutouts look like an oval when you put them in there. So I'm gonna make a little two-tone sheep. So from the detail layer that I have cut out of the black cardstock, I'm first going to dig out the pieces I don't need, which would be like the center of the ears and the chin line and his little nose and his mouth. And from there, I should be able to kind of just carefully pick up the whole detail layer. And what I wanna do is just with my scissors, chop right next to his little chin line, I should be able to just snip it and that will remove the head from the rest of the detail layer. And it's just the head that I'm going to put on over the top of my sheep to change the color. And since that is a sticker, I should be able to just line that up and stick that on. I'm also going to convert his little legs into the black color. So all I need to do is just with my little detail spring-loaded scissors, I'll go in there and snip out each of the legs. Since those are stickers, even though they're small pieces, I can use the tweezers, just line them up and put them over the top of the white ones to change the color. And then after getting all four of the legs on, then I can find that little white tuft cloud looking piece and put that right at the top of his eyes. Since I had the double-sided adhesive on the back of the white detail layer when I cut it, it actually embossed a little bit of the swirl pattern into it. So then if I brush that with a little bit of dark gray ink, it's going to bring out the swirls in that detail layer. Okay, where my little sheep is gonna go is actually attached to the front of the barn. I'm just gonna use the glue on half of the sheep, the half that's going to actually be touching the barn. Since some of it's gonna hang off the edge, I just made sure I didn't have adhesive in those areas. March is full of birthdays for me and I missed most of them. So this card is definitely going to one of those people that I missed their birthday in the month of March. There is this stamp set called the Homegrown Greetings that has a stamp that says, I feel bad and sheepish, I forgot your birthday. And then there's also one that says happy birthday to you. So I'm gonna use those two stamps on the card. Soft finish cardstock is colored on one side and white on the inside. So if you emboss it like I did here with the clouds folder and then sand the edges, you'll get a little definition to those clouds. Then I just tied a ribbon and added the hay there from the hay there set. Snowball the sheep comes with a cute little flower die and I just added a glitter dot in the middle. I'm gonna use one on the front of the card and then I've also used a couple on the inside of the card on the two sheep. Double-sided adhesive tape is all I need to attach this now into the backing card. I've added the tape to both sides of the card but I'm only gonna remove it from one half at a time. My favorite way to add a backing card to a card like this is just to make sure that it's centered in the fold and then just carefully wiggle the back wall to the backing card. Attaching the other side is super easy. Just peel up the liner on the tape so that it's sticky and then just bring it to the card itself to attach it. 
One last bit of decoration are these little banner stickers. I just found them in my stash and I added them inside the card as well in the sky back behind the barn scene. So now you can see my finished card. It's a pretty simple design. It measures about four and a half inch square. When folded up, it will easily mail in an A7 envelope for a single stamp. Well, I hope that you feel inspired to try this for yourself. If you need to know about any of the supplies I used in today's video, you can find them in the description box on YouTube, along with a link to the blog post. If you follow me on Facebook, Karen Berniston Designer, you will be treated to daily inspiration. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.